And I must say, it's been very interesting, very frustrating at times. But uh, I think we are doing, as the Pope told me on the 7th of November, 1979, when I spoke to him for 10 minutes, he said to me, that I'd bring this pro-life, this pro-family work all over the world. And he said, if you do that, you will be doing the most important work on earth. I didn't catch on right away. Later on, it occurred to me, if there's no babies, there's no future. Babies are the only future that the nation has. Babies are the only future that the church has. Babies are the only future that the married couple has. What's left of your marriage in old age but your children who come to you Christmas and Easter, uh, who come to you, rush to you from all parts of the country, to your deathbed, to pray and usher you into heaven? I say again, what is left of your marriage in old age but your children? Last summer, uh, we saw or read about the deaths of 700 uh, people, old people, in Chicago. They died alone. I often ask myself, how come they died alone? Why weren't there boys and girls, sisters and brothers, or at least children, uh, sons and daughters there? I won't judge, but I suspect that um, some of those who died alone never thought that in old age it is so important to have children to assuage the difficulties of that period of life. And uh, I'm afraid a lot of people today, not wanting children, are not looking into the future, not looking into the loneliness of old age, when the real consolation is that the boys and the girls, uh, the sons and daughters, to which, to whom, rather, you gave life, and uh, who uh, will thank you in this life uh, and in all eternity, because after all, we're here only to get back to God, from whom we came, and to whom we must and want to go back, so that uh, nothing is so precious as human life, nothing is so important as the family in which life is born. As the Pope says, when God gives life, he gives it forever. And that's the tragedy of abortion, isn't it? It ends a life that uh, will go on forever, even if you kill the baby, the, the soul goes on forever. But it will never see the light of day, that poor child. It will never experience the joys we have in seeing beautiful nature and meeting all kinds of interesting people, and so on and so forth. Abortion is a total, unmitigated tragedy. And everyone who is alive should thank God every day that he or she is alive because we came at the right time or we chose the right parents. Uh, the fact is, uh, many do not make it today because of the selfishness of a society that poses to be so progressive, but is really so barbaric as to kill its unborn, must liquidate its future. I repeat what Franklin, Benjamin Franklin said, a remedy for luxury has never been found. It seems uh, affluence crowds out the human spirit, the memory of God to whom we are all responsible, and uh, we get so taken up with the things of this world that uh, we don't think very much and uh, we do not realize or we forget why we are here where we're supposed to be going here we see our new uh, world headquarters in front royal virginia the front and uh, you see it's a multi-purpose building as i think i explained already it has a training center for leadership training uh, for people who will bring here from all over the world. We have a large shipping unit. We have a library, editing rooms, suites for priests and for guests, kitchens, of course. And uh, we have storage for our many materials we send all over the world. And whatever you need to work in all these countries, uh, by way of shipping literature, videos, films, and whatever is needed by leaders to counter the culture of death in order to build a culture of love and life. Here is a, the entrance, the inside entrance. Um, you see here the receptionist in the center. On the right side is the reception room, uh, waiting room, and on the left you'll see a bookstore. Uh, you see the second floor. Right beyond this, by the way, is the chapel. Uh, 